Conservation, uh, Conservation Commission meeting, September 10, 2024, or at 6.30 p.m. Um, first thing on the agenda, request for the term, termination of applic applicability, 89 Hockenham Road. We still have not heard anything from Tory Fields about the trailer getting moved. It was continued again. It was continued last meeting. Oh, no, I was no, not here. So, yeah. yeah, so now it's... I think me and Kayla just said it's the fourth or fifth month of this now. We've heard nothing. So I don't know if it's time. What are we supposed to do now? I mean, he's on vacation now. So when he comes back, I think that I should sit down with him and ask him what he wants to do to figure it out together. Because so I think initially it went from Tommy to us. Yeah. Right. And we haven't heard anything in this long, so it's going back there and we can be done with it because yeah. it's she's obviously not making the effort that she initially stated she was gonna. So you know, I think it's time to get moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least for us. That's that's my opinion at least. Um, so she still wants to get get an approval for the shed that she doesn't want on the property anyway. Correct. So yeah, just it's been kicked it's been kicked down the road a little too long, I think, at this point. So it's time to so. So I wonder if there was a time he hasn't received any word from the applicant draw it without permission or if he needs permission. I don't know what that time limit is. We should find that out first. Yeah. Yes. I think we should continue at next meeting and find that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If we get everything in order for them, that's I don't see any issue with that. No. I make a motion to uh to continue this uh this issue at 85 Hockenham Road to next month's meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Kayla, yeah. Find out find out if we can just wipe this off of our agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We've done zero forward progress with that. Very good. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Can't waste too much time on nope. that. Nope. All right. So next up, notice of intent. Uh, file number 170-299 is going to be for 4 French Street. Mark and Patty Solomon are here tonight on Zoom. To seek and const construct a retaining wall and patio on their single-family home in the riverfront area. Can you guys hear us? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Kayla did forward us an email this so talking to you. Oh, there's Ward Smith. Okay. Ward, you're muted. Thank you. There we go. All right. So we did receive this map in the email this week, um, looking over everything in your write up. Everything does seem to look in order from what I could see. I don't know yeah. if there's anything. Um, yep. Um, we, well, as you know, in the Rivers Act, um, we're, we're filing under the redevelopment provisions um, because even though they're only exempt if they're more than 50 feet from the mean annual high water line or wetland, whichever is uh, further or closer, I mean. Um, so we've got 125 square feet that's within 50 feet. So technically, that's what we need to mitigate. But we're mitigating the entire 350 square foot area of the patio and retaining wall um, because you, in order to, to meet the redevelopment standards, you have to give two to one mitigation and improve existing conditions. So this will be uh, more than two to one mitigation and an improvement. In my September 9th letter, I also uh, added, and we discussed this at the site visit, that they'd like to put a fence along the edge of the uh, retaining wall, meeting up with the f existing fence that's next to the detached garage, just so kids can't uh, get back in there and fall off of the embankment because it's really steep back there. Um, and I proposed planting 20, a total of 24 shrubs divided between shad bush, spike bush, silky dogwood, and winterberry holly in the mitigation area. And the Solomons have um, agreed to continue to remove uh, Japanese knotweed, which they have been doing for years. There's not a ton of knotweed there, but there still is some. There so, was a ton. Hmm? There was a ton. Yeah, I believe there was a ton. I'm saying there isn't a ton right now, but there is still some. Yeah. Um, so they, they agreed to continue to remove that as part of the mitigation. So I, I think we're 
exceeding what the requirements of what we're, we need to do under the redevelopment provisions. What are your guys' thoughts? And the garage is actually closer to the river. Right, and that's already, it's already in place. Right, so. that's already that's closer. And what, this is just a brick patio you're putting in here? You're not gonna, is it poured concrete or I'm just trying to figure out? It's and either gonna be first and how stone. Is the retaining, how high is the retaining wall? I think it's no more than about two feet, but I don't have that in front of me. Um, Rob Adair was going to do that for us, and we had a separate, you know, thing from him. Um, but it's it's just to level off the area. It's not going to be a high wall. No, I know. It doesn't look like there's too many contours on this map, map until you probably go off the edge. Right. So. Yeah, and the edge is the edge. The edge is really steep, as you know, in that whole section of the river. Yeah. For the edge, it's a gradual slope. Yeah. So I don't think it's good. Maybe we could say between two and three feet tall. Okay. And I think we had ruled out cement. I think we were going to be using stone or pavers. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah, we don't want concrete. We don't want a cement patio. Do you have a timeline for the planting area? I don't know if you can hear me. Could you guys hear Kayla? She was just curious to see if you guys had a timeline for the planting area as far as when that was going to get started. We'd like to start this, this planting season before the frost. Um, yeah, originally it was going to be this spring, but it's the, the can's been kicked down the road quite a few times and we have to talk to, to our contractor and see when he can put us on. It might not be until next spring. I don't know that this work is going to happen this fall. It might be spring. Yeah, and we didn't, we haven't discussed sources, but I recommend New England wetland plants in South Amherst. They've got pretty good prices and, um, all container stock, which tends to do pretty well. Yeah, someone else mentioned them. That's a, a thank uh, you. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that's. I tell. That's what I recommend to everybody. I think their prices. It. Yeah. It's not. It's not cheap. Nothing's cheap, but it's it's reasonable. The prices are reasonable, and it's good quality stuff. Mm -hmm. That thing's only three hundred fifty square feet. Right. Fourteen feet by twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nothing. And the only part that's really being just disputed is the hash mark piece of the hash. Stock so, they like said the way I look at the garage is already more than right. More half of it's already in that zone, There's anyways. There not a lot. And for it not being a permanent structure, whether it's pavers or you know stone or whatnot, I don't see any issue with that. I think the biggest thing would be the retaining wall. Mm. But I understand why they want it though too. Yeah, no, I, I like it. I like it. Um, Kayla, from here, do we have to do a determination of the applicability? Okay. Get the audio from there. Um, but I have three proposed special conditions, which are just to install a line of erosion and sediment control barriers at the edge of the construction area, um, which shall remain in place until construction is complete and then the site is stabilized with plantings. Um, and then the mitigation area shall be constructed as indicated on the plans and shall be monitored for sufficient plant growth for two growing seasons prior to the issuance of a certificate of compliance. And then no construction materials or yard waste shall be stored within 35 feet of the mean annual high water line. Yep. I think that's all. That's all I have. How does that sound? If that's something that you guys can work with, I think we can definitely play ball with you because that's... Absolutely. Yeah, the erosion easier. mitigation is that like a what do they call those socks that you? The... It'd, be a, it'd be a silt sock, or if it's a, that's going to basically be up to the contractor, either a silt sock or a, a silt fence. Um, yeah, both of which plan, you can put Excuse there. me if I I get sorry to interrupt, but the the site plan calls for a double erosion barrier, so uh, silt fence and straw waddle. Yeah, yeah. Straw. so yeah, they usually do go hand in hand with something like that, Steve. Um, so yeah, I don't see any issue with that. Yeah, looks good. 
So do we have to go to a vote on that? No, yeah, you, someone has to make a motion to issue the order of conditions with the three proposed special conditions. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve this with the three order of conditions as read to be followed for this to go forward. No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we gotta sign Thank that you and much. then um Ward, do you want me to just send it to you or do, do you want me to send it to Mark and Patty? I'd send to, it to or... Mark and Patty. It's fine. Okay. Do you, do you send an electronic copy also? And then I'll send if the original to you, Mark and Patty. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Great. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, you guys. Have a good night. Looks good. Bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Ward. Yes. Thanks so much, Ward. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now that is going to be it for the agenda as far as what we have here today. Uh, public comment. I think Richard's here. Oh, um, yeah. I... If you want, you can come sit up here. I'm with the Pioneer Valley yeah. Chinese Merchant Charter School. And we recently um, purchased a building at 300 Venture Way. And as part of the due diligence, we had um, sort of wetlands inspection. So, and, and, um, and basically what's coming out of it was there's a storm management system um, that was built many years ago, when, presumably when the building was built or before that, I don't know. Um, I don't know if we, uh, it, it, it may never have been uh, maintained. I'm not sure it hasn't been maintained for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I do have what I think are the operations and maintenance plan. Okay. Um, and we asked whether uh, we had conversations with Kayla um, about what we can do with this. And our interest is in being able to bring the, the um, storm management system back to its original function. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and I guess I'm asking, how, how do I go about doing that? And I guess I need authorization from you guys to do it. So let me know how to proceed. And, and we've been working with Heritage Surveys, which was involved in some of the original survey work on this. And I think if needed, they can come up with a formal plan. We did have someone do some estimate about what it would cost to do the work, and it's, you know, it's like fifty thousand dollars to to do that kind of work. Right. But but um, um, let me know how to proceed. <laughs> I think there's two options. I think the first option is if you just if you don't want to make any upgrades, you don't want to change it from what was originally permitted. We can issue a friendly enforcement order, which I think I mentioned, which is basically just so some of that has probably now reverted to wetlands, so you can't really just go back and dig it. Right. But if we issue a friendly enforcement order, being like you have to return this to to the original conditions that were permitted under this operations and maintenance plan, mm -hmm. then you have to do like it's permitted because we made you do it. Um, the other one is is if you want to make any changes, you can you know file a new notice of intent for a, a different stormwater system. And I have. I mean, I've had no conversations with anybody about changing it in any way. Mm -hmm. um, and I can ask, but I'm sort of hesitant to go down that path. I think we're yeah. going to just maintain it soon. Right, and make sure everything's working properly the way it should be. Right. I mean, this is oop, this is what was permitted. Yeah. Exactly. Here, whatever here's doing. the directions on how to maintain it. Right. Sure we want to put A and B together and work. Yeah. And what are you saying? Just just issue a uh, in order in order to uh, to maintain. Yeah, and it, it, it's called like an enforcement order. But just in, it's like an agreement. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Revert it to the original conditions. And and what's the time frame that I need to do this when I get the order from you guys? I mean, we could do it at the next meeting, probably. We we'll want to do a site visit. Um, what I'm asking is, when do I need to have the contract to do it? Do I need to do it this year? Can I do it next summer? What's the time frame for that kind of stuff? I mean, I guess okay. as soon as you'd want to do it, we'd issue the. Yeah, I mean, once we issue it, you could kind of do it whenever you want. 
Okay. Unless there's, I mean, I don't know if we would put conditions on a time frame, maybe. Yeah, and, and I want to do it. The only reason I'm asking is because um, I'll be looking for funding for other stuff. So mm -hmm. it'd be nice to wrap it and do other funding. So right. Have the time for sure. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's kind of timetables that are spelled yeah, out in know. here. Well, I, I can't do that now because it's wetlands. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 that's a problem. Okay. Right, like some of those, one of the sweepings show up here in the spring after snowmelt. I mean, yeah. And I'm sure some of the stuff has most certainly been neglected for, for a while. Yeah, I think, okay, I think we would have to issue the enforcement order and then you bring it to your contractor or whatever, and then they come up with a plan of. Okay, and, and we yeah. bring the plan to you guys to do final approval on it. Yeah, that, that, that could be a condition of it. Yeah. Would you want to see everything flagged out? Like we did yeah. do a site visit? I don't know if you would have to get someone there to really give us a, a border of where everything is mm -hmm. on that. I don't know if that surveyor can do that. Mm -hmm. If the surveyor you're working with will be able to flag out where the wetlands are. He's been there in the, you know, well, I get, I'm not sure this is a long process, but I, but he, I think he's been here in the last year. So, but, okay. And and he's been involved with it for, for, you know, 15, 20 years. So he knows the property. Right. Okay. And he, and he did the full blown, there, there was a full blown analysis of all the easements and everything like that. I forget there's a name they have for it, but the survey that has all that stuff, but we, we've done sort of a comprehensive review of the property in that context. Okay. And and if you want flagging, we can have them flag it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I just think it would make it handy for, especially if we do a site visit, or if the contractor's there, he'll have a visual of where he can and can't be. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a no-go zone to stay out of, so. Um, so could we issue that friendly work order tonight, or is that something you want to wait on? Um, We should wait. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. I would need to take a, a deeper look at those plans and then draft it. Have them come the back or something? Yeah, okay. we have to create conditions for it. Right. Right. Okay. So I can have a draft of that at the next meeting. And then in the meantime, I think we should do a site visit. Sure. Well, so um, maybe Richard, I'll reach out to you. Or do you want to schedule a site visit tonight while we're all here? Whatever works for everyone. Please. Okay. Um, is there a time maybe next week? That would work for you, Richard, for a site visit. I, I'm pretty flexible. One or two weeks. Oh, well, I am. But no, I can't. I'm not sure I can have it flagged by next week. If you yeah. want it flagged, you right. give me some time. So right. Yeah. Flagged? That's have everything done there at the property first. Okay. You can see a visual, and then if you get a hold of Kayla, we can we can plan a date. Let so Kayla I'll, know. So I get it flagged, yeah. and I'll talk to Kayla, and, yeah. then and she she can send us all an email, and yeah, we'll exactly. come up with a date, and we can come meet you down there. Yep. Yeah. So we all know we're looking at the same thing. Okay. Perfect. Great. Well said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So for public comment. Yeah. Other business. Ditch maintenance event recap. Oh well, and other business. I think also I would like to bring up. Um, let me exit the Zoom. Or this. Okay. I think we're done sharing plans, so I'm gonna stop the screen share. Um. We had discussed the 32 Stockbridge Street tree. Um, and I think some of you went out for a site visit for that. So the homeowner got a an arborist to come out um, and look at the tree, and he said that it's not in good shape. It's probably going to come down and it could pose a hazard. So he recommends that it comes down. Mm -hmm. And the property owner sent me a picture of some of the larger branches falling down, even in the past week. So I don't know. I think that, well, I think it should come down. Yeah. But I think we should vote on it. No, I, I I agree too. Um, I, sorry, sorry, I didn't meet you guys out there that that morning. I called into work, so. Um, um, but, so if we vote on this, we don't have to go, you know, the DP. Yeah. But basically, what it means or could yeah. we just go to the DP and let him decide. I mean, we could also do an emergency certification, and that would go through DP, but we decide. I mean, if it's a hazard, I see no issue with just. You didn't go on there. No, I saw the pictures on the yeah, email. I, um. 
I know, I know. I've driven by it a hundred times. I know exactly where it is, but yeah, it, it's it's lean. It really is. And it's, it's yeah, it's, it's heavy, heavy duty lean. When I, was I would here, rather the next door neighbor, little kids were running around yeah. too. So, and for our sake too, I'd rather get it gone. And, and if we tell her to keep it for some reason, and something happens, then it could oh, potentially fall back. And what I'm, yeah, I'd rather just see it gone. Especially if, if she if she already took the proper routes to get a hold of an arborist and a company to come look at it, right. Yeah. Do we have a copy of that? Maybe. Yeah, I have it in writing. I have an email. Okay, so he said, take it down. Yeah, I could show you the email if you want. Um, I believe you. I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure we yeah. Have that, that, yeah. yeah, we had a professional look at this and said, yeah. that should yeah. come down, and I don't want to be the one to tell her not to cut it down. Exactly. Okay, at Film Library uh, trustee, that's seven. So if you just close that. Oh, should I end the meeting? If you, um, to resume, I guess. If you close it, I think it'll close it. Okay, but it okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, clear conversation earlier. The willow tree in the rear of the property needs to be removed. It has many weak unions that have hooded bark um, and are an imminent risk of failure. Okay. This coupled with the inherently weak wood of the willow tree family would lead this tree to be determined to be an immediate hazard and needs to be removed. And the stump would be left in place. I think that's it's a, good enough for me. Yeah, I'm okay. good with it. But I mean, how do we do? Do we have to do anything? Do we have to? What do we, we, we what, vote? I don't think we need. I, I think we should just vote to have it, you know, in writing. But this is kind of an administrative review, and this is something that, like, we'll talk about the tree removal policy. Um, it it would be kind of an administrative review under that, and if it's a hazard tree in the draft right now, it says that it could be approved without an RDA. Um, which I think is a lot of towns have this pretty standard, um, reg or not regular like policy. If a right. tree is a hazard, you don't need to yeah get a permit for it. Right, take it down. So you just call them up and tell them take it down. It's over. Yeah. If you want to see a vote, do you, do you vote. Yeah, need a motion yeah, or something like that? Or I mean, I, is, I, I think both. Are we all in agreement that? I, yeah, one hundred percent. I agree that this tree should be removed at Thirty Two Stockbridge Stockbridge Street. It's on the owner, and if she wants to take it down, take, take it down. If it's it's hazardous. The guys, telling you it's a hazard. When you visit it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so the next is the ditch and maintenance event recap. Okay, we haven't actually talked about this, but I'd love your feedback on. It. I know it was a while ago. I don't know how much you remember it. Um. But I would love to know your thoughts and if that's like an event that you would kind of want to see more of that sort of outreach in the future. Um, was the topic good? Were the presenters good? Was it helpful information at all? It got everyone in this town and some people from out of town on the same page, which was key. Mm -hmm. That's the guy saying. I think it was a really good presentation. I thought the speakers were good. And... I just, I think that, I mean, it, it just brought, it brought it forward that, listen, it, it, the farmers, it's their land and they've got to work it. it yeah. It's, it, it's their living. And, and if they can, if they, if they need to do the, do the dish maintenance, they can do it. I mean, mm -hmm. it gets, I mean, we all know it gets kind of hairy when it gets. It, well, it, it cleared up a lot of those gray areas too, though, because a yeah. lot of people thought it was just, if it was APR, they could touch it. Or if it right. was APR, they had to go to DEP about it. And right. that basically leveled it off saying, as long as the land is used in agricultural, either right. side of the ditch, go ahead. And if it's only used on one side, then you clean your one side. And I think that opened up a lot of. A lot of eyes. Yeah. No, big <laughs> yeah. time. A lot of common sense too. Right. And that's something exactly. that I think we were striving for for like the longest time when it came to that issue. But it's just everyone was just scared to jump into it. Yeah. And, you know. Well, and, and Kayla, I mean, I, I, I thought it was a great, great presentation. I think it, there should be more of those. I mean, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Did Do you think the formatting was good where it was like two presenters and kind of a brief like Q&A? Or do you think it should be more discussion focused and not present? Like not a lot of people wanted to really talk. About yeah, that's, yeah, I, yeah. It's just kind of taking it all in, though. Which is good. So, not, not a lot of people. A lot of guys yeah. in that room, their gears were already turned about when they got out of the meeting what they're going to start doing. Right. Them. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, well, that's, you know, which is good. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was anything wrong with the meeting. No, I really don't. Oh, yeah. especially that speaker from USDA. He was awesome. Yeah. yeah. He was really good. I mean, it was a good turnout. 
<laughs> and, there, and the people that couldn't have been there, you know, they were asking me the next day about it. I said, hey, it's on YouTube if you want to watch it. And they they all did. Let's see. I, I had a couple of people come to me and they said, hey, I watched it on YouTube. Yep. And this was like two days later. So yeah, they couldn't make it. So that was good. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there any other topics that you feel like would be good um, for that sort of event in the future? Any other? The only thing that I didn't bring up that meeting and I wanted to was about and this just pertains to me and what I do on the side, but for as far as beaver removals, when it comes to an agricultural ditch. Now, if there's a dam where I normally would have to go and do a whole write-up, if that's on a stream in a farm field, does that give me, you know, as long as I have the Board of Health permit, does that give me the full right to go through and dig it? As a farmer? Or as, as, far, as, as a, a contractor as, for the for farmer? You know what I mean? And that's, I wish I brought that up to him. I didn't really think of it at the time. But I mean, as far as that goes, that's maintenance. I would say it's maintenance. Yeah. To an extent. Well, I don't know. There's another. <laughs> I don't know. Here's someplace else that we might struggle with, you know? And that's something that not a lot of people think of. And I obviously I didn't think of it that night, but I wish I did. Um, hmm. Yeah, because it's all up to the Board of Health, which they say. So the Board of Health generally, so every town that I've worked for, as long as it's impeding on a septic system, if it's impeding on a house foundation, or if it's detrimental to agricultural land, they usually give you a, a blanket permit for your 10 days and whatever. Yeah. If it ever went to dam removal, some towns don't care about it, some towns do. So if you have, obviously, machinery in the water, that's an issue. But if you have machinery in the water 50 yards away cleaning a ditch, that's not an issue. Right. So, well, all right, well, that's just something we could think about. I mean, getting rid of the beavers without doing anything with the dam is kind of it doesn't make any sense because no, no, right. we're taking the dam down and not getting rid of the beavers, they're just going to build it back up, right? Right, and this is another thing I think people just slowly graduated from and paid a little attention to over the years. Did we have that many problems like that in Hadley? There's quite a few in town. I mean, there's, there's a lot of North Hadley. Like surgery is all yep. every other year. Oh yeah, yeah, every other year. He spent a lot of money there. The top of North Hadley Pond, all the way to the backside of Stockbridge. I mean, that's loaded. That's loaded. Yeah. 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 yeah that's true. Hmm. I mean, you go to the Oxbow. I mean, all, it was all green, but I was just there last weekend, and there was so many trees that were hammered by bees, mm -hmm. like so many. And well, it's the, when that flood water comes up and all that backwater in the Oxbow. Yeah, you know, duck on all that, and it's. It's hmm. bad in there. It's just something to think about. I mean, not that we're launching a <laughs> campaign against beavers, but oh, but you got to be. It just kind of gives me, you know what I mean. For me, if I'm doing the work, it's just you but know, I want to be impacted. We, yeah, we we should know the answers, and we should, yeah, absolutely. Right. There's a there's a guide on beaver dam removal or dealing with beavers under the Wetlands Protection Act that I think DP has. I could try to dig that up and, and send it over. I might even have it okay. honestly somewhere, but yeah, if you could find it, yeah. Who has a final say in who could take out a beaver dam? Board of Health and Conservation, I think. And that's it. Yeah. Both? Yeah. 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 It depends. So, like I said, some of the Board of Health I've worked with, they don't even reach out to conservation when it comes to dam removal. I think yeah. a lot of people assume you're doing it by hand. Um, but there's some dams that you can't even think about touching yeah, no. without a machine there. So, yeah. Like I said, if it's in a stream that's, you know, in a farm field or whatever, and I've seen plenty of them like that. Is that something that we could just go through and do? Do we not? Yeah. There's a beaver coming up the brook and back on my shop. I believe it. <laughs> what are you doing here, buddy? Like, you know, spawning. <laughs> All right. Not to mention the guy got bit by a beaver. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That was last year, right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. For the summer for this, yeah. yeah. All right. So, did we want to go over the tree removal policy? Did anybody get a chance to look over that? I did. I looked over a little bit of it, but not all of it. I don't have it with me. I left it at work. But... Yeah, I didn't print out more copies. I just have it on my computer. Um, do we don't have to do anything tonight, do we? No, we don't have to. I just I wanted to get your feedback so I could start incorporating it into maybe a next draft. And when there's maybe when Gary and Gordon are here, we can. Mm figure something out but if you had any um anything that looks completely off or anything that you think should be added taken out i highlighted some stuff on the paper mm -hmm. and i can forward that to you in an email tomorrow 
Yeah, you know, it's like this lady right now is out in the and stock mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't want to make her tell her she has to plant another tree. You know, we're cutting that one down. Shouldn't have to tell her to plant another or in, I don't think so. Agreed. You know. Agreed. No, I mean it's 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 all woods there. To, right. Yeah. You're heaping a stump. So we shouldn't have to right. make her do anything they don't want to do. If they want to plant a tree. Yes. You know what I mean? But right. Yeah. Um, so is there kind of like a threshold where you think that like you shouldn't require a, a planting? Somebody wants to take down just some trees because they don't like the way they look. I feel like that should be different. And are those sorts of trees even would they be covered under the policy? Like, do we just want to cover trees that are a hazard? I mean, the way I look at it, and you know, I didn't go to the site visit here, but I know the tree in question. She caught, got a hold of us. She had an issue with the tree. She got an arborist involved. At that point, it should be no questions asked. Okay. Get it gone. Was my opinion. Okay. And if she doesn't want one back in its place, right. that should be up to her. Yeah. That's Kind of okay, like, I think, yeah, one thing well, that would be good. If it's an aesthetic reason, like you don't like the, the wood line on your house that's bordering a stream, I don't know at that point. Right. You know, if it's all healthy, just because right. you don't like the way it looks. Right. Like, now, this one was clearly. Yeah. I think there's a definitive line there. There's going to be some overlap in some gray area. Some, yeah. Every situation could be different, but right. as long as they're reaching out to us and asking, I think that's, you know, she did her due diligence 100% on that. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think it would be good if the policy covers trees that are deemed like a safety issue mm -hmm. or if they're dead. Do we want how how much do we want to require? Like do we want to have an arborist come out and take a look at it? Do we want to require that at all? Or I think if I she know. had a you know a quote or a draft from an arborist or a tree company, I I'm not gonna say I know more than them. So But do we my question yeah. is do we want to require it to to approve somebody's tree removal or whatever? How much does it cost for numbers? I don't opinion? know. Absolutely. Most of them will give you a free estimate. I mean, to come out there. Well, not only that. I mean, do do we want the arborers arborers to deal to say, okay, listen, this tree is dying. This tree, is, it's going to fall over. It's structurally unsound. Something, you know, some something's wrong. Does it have, you know, something's something's wrong with it? Is that what we're looking for? I mean, I I think we can all go get quotes any day of the week. Right. But I think a site visit is still definitely site necessary for us. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. You know, because it's, you know, we put eyes on something that's green as can be, and she says it's a, it's an issue. We'll prove it. So what if we said a site visit? You know. <laughs> we'll look at the tree for our mother's house. Ray Charles could see that it needs to come down. <laughs> what if we required a site visit and then included kind of like a provision where like the conservation commission can require an arborist to right if it's questionable handle, yeah right. if we go look at that tree on stock that you can see you know what this is standing straight up this is deader than dead we right. can all shake hands and agree that needs to come down right cut it down if it's questionable and we're really hemming and on have them get a hold of an arborist or a tree company and get back to us yep. okay i think that would be that's that would fair. eliminate that's a lot of the up. uh yeah questions yep, yep. yeah all right yeah. So, um, like at the end of the day, we don't want to be on the line if something does come down. We yeah. say we can't take it down, and next thing you know, yep, we're just cabling on top of it. So, yeah. okay, great. So, and the other thing I had for other business was bylaw updates. I didn't. I know that you mentioned that you wanted to see kind of what a potential bylaw update could look like for Hadley. I didn't have a chance to do that. Um, so I could bring that to the next meeting. But I have some examples of towns around here that have kind of a more um kind of like kind of a um a more updated bylaw like Southampton, Sandra Landolf kind of um use the MACC model bylaw. When was the last time ours was updated? I think it was like 2008. And it it's not this is to get an idea of what other towns of kind of similar sizes, even smaller sizes are doing. Shootsbury just updated theirs last year and it's pretty long. I think they they really Put a lot of energy into it these are all different i just printed out a bunch of different ones yes. um but yeah it's just to get an idea of what that endeavor would look like it would probably take a while we'd also have to i mean yeah yeah a lot here <laughs> that's to get public comment and get it approved by the attorney general and everything is there any but, real big difference between like a lot of these and what we're doing now 
what we're doing now is pretty out of date and also doesn't include exemptions for, I mean, it includes like a brief agricultural exemption. It doesn't include exemptions for like public utilities or anything like that. Um, so kind of we have just been going on common sense, but if we actually review things under the bylaw, we would kind of be, you know, we, we, would, we would not be doing what we're doing now. We're, we have not been on common sense. What? We'd be getting away from common sense. I think going back in the right direction is what she's getting at. I think that we need to put the common sense on paper. Okay. We need to, because we, because what we have on paper probably doesn't make sense. Just doesn't add it. 2008. I think we need to, yeah. Yeah, it really was. 20 something years ago, just the way I got. It's just about, I graduated in 10, Kristen, oh, yeah. 15, 16, 17 years ago. Okay. No, it's not good. I won't leave it for sure. This is all South Hampton. So you're gonna get the you were gonna get all those and you're gonna send them over to us, right? Yeah, do you want me to send it in an email? Would you send all three? Yeah. Yeah, so okay. Let me just okay. So I should uh, that's Belcher Town. What do you have? Oh, I have South Hampton. Okay. Pass it around. She said they weren't the same. Oh, I thought there was different ones, different pages. No. These are all three different things. Yeah. So this is more confusing. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have ours on paper though? Could we print ours out? I I'll leave it. And so, yeah, I only and, one include paper. ours. Include okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, let me pull it up right now. So I can show you. If I got time, I can just kind of pick away at all of them and see what overlaps and what right. doesn't. The extra words when there doesn't need to be. Correct. Um. Unfortunately, I don't think the attorney general would like agree. So this is the hat. This is the bylaw. Just this one page is the Hadley bylaw. Just okay. This. And then the rest is the regulations. So the regulations are about two, one and a half pages. Um, and now these are just bylaws. So these, some of these towns have regulations in addition. So another question is, should we combine the bylaw and regulations into one? Because some, like in our bylaw, we have the 35 foot no disturb zone. Some towns have a bylaw and then in their regulations would have a no disturb zone. And that allows you to change things. And it, it's easier to change things if you don't put everything in the box, because the bylaw has to be reviewed by like the state. Regulations can be approved within okay. the commission and the town. Okay. So there's a lot to think about. We don't have to, you know, talk about it tonight and what we want to do, but just like food for thought, um, something to look at going forward, like a long term project. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And I will I'll email those out. I could bring paper copies if you'd rather have paper copies to the next meetings. Um actually I don't need these paper copies. Can I have that Hadley one? Yeah. I want to go through that tomorrow at work. Did you want any of these? I'd rather have this for paper than email. Okay. Would you rather have paper or email? I have a printer. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about you, Brandon? Do you want No, I'm gonna keep printer. I'm gonna pick away at these two right now. <laughs> Hadley should be Hadley should be pretty quick. Okay, great. Um, so the only other things I think I have are, oh, I didn't actually print that out, but for bills, um, I'm hoping to attend the MACC fall conference in October. If anybody wants to join there, welcome. Um, the tuition. You drive it? it it's in Vegas. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> it's in, it's in <laughs> oh, Devin's? I can go out for my kid. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. It's, let's see, what's the price tag on it? $135. Um, I'm planning to go. And if anybody else was interested, we have a tuition budget. So let me know. Um, we should vote on it. When is it in October? October 19th. It's from 8 to 3.30, but there's different workshops. There's four different workshop series. Um that are about an hour each. And then there's a 20 minute break in between with a lunch break. And I can even, I can show you some of the workshop descriptions are, uh, well, the theme is water, water everywhere. So a lot of them are kind of stormwater focused. Um, what day did you say, the 19th? 19th, yeah. That's a Saturday? Saturday. Yeah, it's a Saturday. Okay. Um, yeah, there's one about stormwater review for notices of intent. Um, stream crossing standards, monitoring stormwater and erosion control, um, the flood zone, stuff like that. Mm 
No. Well, the week they consider it. Okay, then can we vote on paying one hundred thirty-five dollars for me to go? I don't have a problem paying you for some gas and some food and <laughs> coffee. Exactly. Yeah. You know I'm saying. Oh, no. Nice. No. Tuition budget and. Yeah. Haven't used it yet this year, so. Oh, 100 percent. Good idea. Okay. Yeah. Great. Agreed. So, motion. I make a motion that we approve the 130, 135, 135, 135 dollars for Caleb to attend seminar at Fort Evans on October 19th. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Thanks. Wait. Uh, I'll let you know what I learned. Yep. And then minutes, I have the July and August minutes. I emailed them. I don't know if you got a chance to read through them, but they're here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the agenda. Is it me? So, this is August. Yeah, this August and then July. You guys get August? And July. I need Jewel. I got ice. Yep. You use mine? I got copy them before I came. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. It was August, it was the 13th, is that the day it was pouring? The rain in that there? Okay. August 13th, the last meeting. What concerns? We were working late. I can't remember what day it was. Oh, maybe I it was. I completely wasn't. forgot about it. I think it was. Yeah, last meeting? During the day. During the day, but then it cleared up it later. Mm. If it was the same day, I stopped at Kelly's just to see if those guys were doing it because it was raining and they already had like an acre and a half of tobacco on the ground. Oh, and I'm just taking it all in. Oh, it was terrible. Oh. Do we need a motion to approve the last two meetings minutes, or are we good? Yeah, we need a motion. Okay, I make a motion to accept the minutes from July and August as handed out in red. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, that's, that's it. Anybody else? Anything else? You got anything? No, Good. All right. Yeah. Well said. Seven twelve. I call this meeting adjourned. Adjourned. You got to adjourn the meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. We're adjourned. Yeah. Make a motion. Make a motion right. to adjourn. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 aye.